I couldn't read a word, of course, but drawings of the viscera, bones, and muscles were quite unlike anything I had previously seen. Physician Sugita Genpaku couldn't read Dutch, but when he stumbled upon a Dutch anatomy book, he was stunned by the drawings. He had never seen anything like it in his Chinese medical books. In the mid-18th century, Western books, first brought clandestinely from the Netherlands, piqued the interest of many Japanese scientists and doctors. Sugita Genpaku received permission from the government to order the first sanctioned autopsy of a criminal's corpse for scientific study. The corpse of the criminal was that of an old woman of about 50 years. The old butcher pointed to this and that, giving them names, but there were certain parts for which he had no names. When we compared what we saw with the illustrations in the Dutch book, it was exactly as depicted. Dr. Sugita and his friends reflected on how shameful it was that they had tried to treat their patients without a true knowledge of the human body. He vowed to learn more. He taught himself Dutch so he could translate the book. The next day, we met and began. Gradually, we got so we could decipher 10 lines or more a day. After two or three years of hard study, everything became clear to us. The joy of it was as the chewing of sweet sugar cane. In 1774, the shogun granted Dr. Sugita permission to publish the medical book so he could share his knowledge with other doctors. This book became part of a growing interest in Dutch learning, known as Rangaku. Originally, Rangaku had to do with medical studies. When physicians discovered they could heal ailments with the new Western medicine from Holland that they couldn't heal with the traditional Japanese medical practices, they became very interested in the study of Rangaku. Gradually, as knowledge of the Dutch language became more widespread, other aspects of Rangaku, such as astronomy, science, and chemistry, were introduced to Japan. Almost a hundred years after Dr. Engelbert Kempfer, the desire for Western knowledge would initiate the push to open the door to Japan from the inside. And yet, as attractive as Western knowledge was to some Japanese intellectuals, there were others who believed that anything Western still threatened Japanese society. One source of harm that has appeared of late is Dutch studies. These students have been taken in by the weakness of some for novel gadgets and rare medicines which delight the eye and enthrall the heart. If someday, the treacherous foreigner should take advantage of the situation and lure ignorant people to his ways, our people will adopt such practices as eating dogs and sheep, and no one will be able to stop it. It is like nurturing barbarians within our own country.